Here's what we're making today. But before we get too far into it, let's back up. First, we gotta do our layout. Now, I know it's gonna seem a little bit dry for some, but if you do your layout good, it's gonna save you a lot of time in the end. Now, I didn't have a compass, so I had to make one. It was as simple as drilling a hole one inch in and then adding on top of that whatever dimensions I needed. And then, as you might have guessed, we just put a screw in the center hole and we pivot around on it. This hand wheel was going to be 12 and a half inches round, so it was as simple as adding six and a quarter. And then we add the inside hand wheel dimension and the hub dimension. Now, for this design, I'm going to lay out my spokes for the hand wheel. And I'm going to make the spokes for the hand wheel about an inch and three quarters wide. Now the spokes of the hand wheel are going to have a slight curve to them. Now if you check out page 20, figure 18, it'll talk a little bit more about this in depth. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit more about the US Navy Foundry Mount and where to get it. Now let's go over some of the mistakes you're going to see me make. And let's talk about making the router jig that you got to use. Super easy. We're going to come over here. We're going to mark out. We need an inch and a half from the edge of the blade from in here. So we've got an inch and a half from here with the edge where it'll be cutting to where the pin is going to be pivoting right there. Then the inside is a little bit trickier because we got to take into account the thickness of the blade because we're actually cutting on the inside, the opposite side of this. We're going to be cutting in here. So this blade is a three quarter inch blade. So we're going to measure from the center the outside was just five inches then we're going to subtract three quarters from that coming over here you can see that i've already done it so here's your three quarter inch blade so i've got a mark on this side and that would be five inches over here so i'll just butt this up against here and it should be four and a quarter now once again easy for the outside it's six and a quarter the outside wheel come over here butt it up against the out because remember we're cutting on the outside of the wheel here It'll be six and a quarter. Now what we got to do is we find a pin that's going to fit in there and we're just going to tap that pin in there to stay. And then we're going to drill a hole just slightly bigger than that pin size. And then this will pivot all the way around. Conveniently a MIG tip is a quarter inch. So that's what I'm using today. Next, it's easy as setting your depth, then marking your depth on the side of the rotor, and then incrementally cutting the depth of your circles. Also, I did find with this jig, I should have cut a lot more relief for chips coming out because it bogged up quite a bit. I'm sure by now you've noticed that I'm cutting off all of my layout lines. However, I did get a really good idea of what I'm building. Off camera, I did lay it out again after I hogged out all the material in between. You'll see this when I cut it out with a scroll saw. For the purpose of this video, I made this with small hand tools and small power tools. It would have been a lot easier to use the CNC router that I have. However, the purpose of this video is to teach people how to make it, and I want to be able to teach people how to make it with accessible tools that most people have or know someone that does have. Now you just route out the material in between. At this point now, you're going to want to clamp the two together, and now we're going to have to put dowel pins in. I had a couple little metal plugs that were just conveniently laying around the shop, and I'm going to drill in three places to a depth not to poke through on the other side.
This top hole will be later filled with putty. Hands down, this is the best part of the project, I think. If you don't have access to a scroll saw, you can use a hand scroll saw that I'm pretty sure you can find pretty cheap at KMS or your local hardware store. Now, if you look on the side, you're going to notice a little difference in the height of the material. This is where I grabbed the router once again with some veneering bits. The side of the veneering bit will roll along the bottom part of it, and then the top part will cut, making the two surfaces the same. You have to go around and then flip it and do it again. This job would have been much easier had it had a table router. Next, you'll have to round the corners. I set my height roughly by eye, and then I grabbed a scrap piece of wood just to be sure since I had spent so much time on the project already. Now this rotor bit's going to leave a small step, and I'll explain a little bit more about relief later on in the video. There were some errors if you look there on the bottom side. I'm just going to skip over it with the router and not route that corner, and I'm going to fill it with putty later and then file it around. Now I'm going to route the inside, but I'm going to stay away from the spokes of the wheel, because this type of bit won't lend itself very well to cutting in there. Now you're going to need a couple files. If you look there, you're going to see a lip. In sand casting, of course, you're going to need a 3 to 5 degree relief so that it'll pull out of the sand and the mold. The rotor naturally cut that little step in there, and it worked out quite well. This process was probably done over a couple days when I did it. I did find it kind of therapeutical and a good, good chance to get out on the deck. Next, you're going to need some emery cloth and you're just going to have to polish it up. I ran down to Princess Auto, or for the people that are in the States, that would be Harbor Freight, and I grabbed myself some sandable primer. Now there's going to be a bunch of areas that you're going to have to fill in quite a bit, so I got some polyfiller, or spackle, and I'm just going to smear it in. Pardon the camera angles because it was a little bit hard running the camera at the same time while putting this stuff on. I did try it with my finger, however it was better with a tool to use. You're going to cycle through this a few times by sanding and filling, sanding and filling. And then you're going to want to get a high gloss paint and put two or three coats on making sure not to have runs. The runs will probably show up in your casting if you do have them. Now this type of wood is pretty brittle, so you're going to have to run a razor blade in between the two gaps before you try pulling it apart. Thanks for sticking around for the end of the video. I've got a really good read for you if you're at all interested, which I'm sure you are because you watched the video and stuck around to the end. Don't forget to hit subscribe. The U.S. Navy Foundry Manual. It's a free in the link down below. It, uh, it's a 300-page document that will lead you through every step of the way and tell you everything you want to know about casting and then some. Check it out. It's free, and we'll see you next time.